Hello, my friends at Long Beach Post Acute Care. I hope that this finds you doing well. We're going to be worshiping virtually for uh, a month or two here, uh, just as things with uh, the Omicron variant uh, kind of work their way through our state and through the world. And uh, I'm happy to be with you. I was not with you on last Sunday, which is the third Sunday, our normal Sunday, because I was working myself through COVID, my whole family. Uh, had COVID-19, and so we are uh, on the mend. We are feeling better and trying to get back to uh, what we would call the new normal or the new everyday. Uh, things change so frequently. But I'm here with you today, and uh, thank you for your patience uh, and um, your willingness to be here. Let's start with a word of prayer. Father God, thank you so much for another opportunity to come together to worship you. We thank you for uh, all the brothers and sisters who have gathered together to view this worship service. Uh, and I thank you for uh, the healthcare workers who are working there diligently at Long Beach Post Acute Care. Father, for everyone involved uh, in the facility down there, I pray that you keep them safe and keep them well, keep the virus away from them. And dear Lord, be with us uh, as we study your word this morning and as we uh, lift you up in song and in prayer. Thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord. I'm standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's not my mother, not my father, but it's me, O oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's not my mother, not my father, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, I'm standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Amen. It's me uh, standing in the need of prayer, and it's you, and it's all of us that stand in the need of prayer. Let's sing um, Jesus Loves Me, just one verse. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. I love that song, and um, I, I love it because we are called the children of God. It means that God is our Heavenly Father. And so uh, that song reminds me that God loves me as my father would. God loves me as me as a father to my children would. And so with that comes love and affection. There also comes discipline and, and there comes correction. And no matter how old we get, um, we need to check in sometimes and be checked in and be checked sometimes about our behavior and how we're dealing with things. And so um, Jesus loves me, this I know, um, and God loves us and we are children of God. And so Singing a song that kind of reminds me of childhood is just a reminder of how precious we are uh, to God and how precious he is to us and uh, what he does and how uh, he lives and how we live. 
I'd like to do one more song, and then we'll have our scripture uh, reading for the day. Let's sing um, Humble Thyself in the Sight of the Lord. We'll do a couple verses of this one. Humble Thyself in the Sight of the Lord. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. Come on now, humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. And he will lift you up. And he will lift you up. Christ Jesus is the Son of God. He is Christ Jesus is the Son of God. He died to set us free. He died to set us free. You humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. Come on and humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. And he will lift you up. And he will lift you up. And he will lift you up. Amen. The scripture today, which will be coming up on your screen shortly, comes from the book of Philippians, chapter 2. And we will read, I always have a hard time with this because there's so much good stuff uh, in the text that I want you to read. You know what? We're just going to start at Philippians chapter 2 and verse 1. And um, I'll read at least until verse 4. But let's let's focus kind of on there. Philippians chapter 2. And we'll go verse 1. To four at least, and I may read a little bit more. And whatever uh, I do read will be on your screen. And uh, I am reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. So if you have a different translation, it'll sound maybe a little bit different. Uh, then the uh, the King James will sound a little different than this, but they're, they're similar. But if you're reading something like the Message or the New International Version, there may be some big differences in the translation. So I just want to let you know I'm reading from the New King James Version. And here we go. Philippians chapter 2, starting at verse 1. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. I'm going to stop there. So Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 through 4, that is our scripture uh, for today. And that was what I just read. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. And we'll stop there and uh, let's have a prayer. Please bow your head with me. Lord God, thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for another day. Thank you for the sun that shines, dear Father, for the rains that you brought us. Dear Lord, we thank you for all of your blessings. Father God, you are awesome. You are wonderful. We thank you so much for the opportunity to serve you, to love you, and thankful for the opportunity to love one another. Father, please lift up my, my friends down at Long Beach Post Acute Care. It's always wonderful when we can get together. And we look forward to a time when we can get together again in person safely. Uh, and dear Lord, just be with us as we go through the difficult moments. Bless all the staff there at Long Beach Post Acute Care. And not only them, but bless their families and those that they interact with. And may they be uplifted uh, each and every day, dear Father. For I know 
that life comes with many struggles and lots of things get us down. So I just ask your blessings upon them as they work and as they thrive and strive to do well. Be with us now and keep us safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's have one more song. And then uh, I want to get into um, the message for the morning. Uh, I won't tarry too long, as the old preachers would say, uh, just because I'm not feeling 100%, but I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty darn good. I'm, but I'm just not at, at my, my full value of health uh, yet, so don't want to push things too hard. But uh, let's sing. Oh, come on. We got to sing. I keep falling in love with him. Um, let me adjust my mic just a little bit. Bring it a little closer to me. Um, for those of you that know me, um, you know, I, I, I play music professionally. And so when I'm out here, I do a lot of recording and I use this microphone to record music. It's been a wonderful tool. And you'll find that you have to change things around <laughs> every now and then uh, for better uh, production. So anyway, uh, I'm so thankful uh, for people who help me. It's amazing the, the way that God works because he, he put people in my life that help me with things. And sometimes people that um, I don't normally spend a lot of time with and they'll pass by. You know, we might see each other on social media or something. Uh, and, and then we connect and say, hey, I have a question about this or that. God puts people in place all the time to help you with life. So just be open to receive um, those things. All right. I keep falling in love with him. And then we're going to get into our message for the morning. <clears throat> I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days they go by and know oh, what a love between my lord and i i keep falling in love with him is over and over and over and over again he keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. He keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. Well, he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days they go by. And oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him. It's over, over and over and over again. Oh, he keeps cleansing me over and it's over, over and it's over and over again. Again, well, he keeps cleansing me over and it's over and over and over and over again. Well, he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days they go by. And oh, what a love between my Lord and I, I keep Falling in love with him, it's over and over and over and over again. Amen. All right. Um, we're going to study this morning, just for a little while, from the book of Philippians. And uh, got me a little drink here. My cup of coffee, which is probably cold, but I'm going to have a sip anyway. Philippians. I like the book of Philippians. And uh, I like a lot of these smaller um, books of the Bible. These are writings that, um, let's see, Philippians. This is a writing that Paul was doing uh, to the saints at Philippi. And if you ever get a chance, and I haven't done this in a while, get you a map of these Bible places 
And it's interesting to me, I don't think this is a mandatory thing, but I do think it's interesting to look at the places that are talked about in the Bible and to see how different things relate and, and how you look at one place and you see how far away it was from another. And if you enjoy reading maps, which I know in our modern day, I mean, if I get in my truck and I need to go somewhere, I turn on an app and it tells me where to go. But there used to be a time when if I needed to go somewhere, uh, we had a thing called the Thomas Guide. And the Thomas Guide was your map and you had to know east and west and north and south. And it was good to know a familiar uh, freeway if you were going out to a place that was unfamiliar. You wanted to have somewhere to go. So I think it's interesting to read Bible maps and see these places. But we have uh, Paul here talking to uh, the saints at Philippi. And uh, something I like about Paul is that Paul always begins his letters with a nice introduction. And, and it's an old school principle of how when we deal with people, Paul usually has a greeting uh, that he sends to people first. And then after that, if he has something that he needs to say uh, to the people, he's going to get on them after he after he greets them, after he says hello and after he's gentle. And so it's kind of like you get the you get a gentle uh, welcome and then you get poof uh, hit in the face with the things that that you need to be talked about uh, that are going on in your area. So. Here's something uh, that I want us to, to look at today, uh, or this morning, I should say, or whenever you're looking at this broadcast. The time really doesn't matter. Um, what matters is that you're here and that you are ready to, um, to work and listen to the word. So uh, in the book of Philippians, let's go back to Philippians chapter 2, as I mentioned earlier, and... Um, I am looking at this on my phone. You may have your own personal copy of the Bible. Um, Philippians chapter 2. And let's look up verse 1 through 4. My message today is about um, brotherly love. And, and, and not some, not, well, I, I, I don't want to say brotherly love. I want to say, I mean, brotherly love is going to have a lot to do with this, but what I want us to do today is I want us to look at the Bible with the idea of looking out for one another. So I really do think that actually falls under brotherly love, but I don't want to title my sermon that, but I'm going to title my sermon looking out for one another. So as we read here, it says, therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, now I want you to understand this scripture starts off with the word therefore. So that means that before we get to hear Something else has been said or has happened that leads us to this point. So um, we had something else go on uh, before we get here. And here's what we had happen, or here's what we have happened. It says this, therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, uh, and of one mind, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Okay, so looking out for one another. What does that look like? Well, like I said, Paul t says in the beginning of this text, we have the term Therefore, so really quickly, I want to go back to chapter one and look at a few things. And I will start at chapter one. And let's go verse. Let's start at verse 27. Now, you really need to go back if you want to get the full crux of this. Go back to Philippians chapter one and just start at the beginning. These are not very long uh, chapters of the Bible. But verse 20, Philippians 1, 27 says this, Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and not in any way terrified by your adversaries, which is to them uh, a proof of perdition, but to you of salvation and that from God. And that from God. For to you, it has been granted on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake, 
having the same conflict which you saw in me and now here is in me. Now, chapter two, therefore, okay, so that's where that therefore we really understand. Okay, so these things have happened. What has happened? Paul in chapter one talks a lot about him being in chains, him being in prison because of the gospel. And, and in chapter one, uh, he mentions not only himself, but, but Timothy. He says, Paul and Timothy, bond servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi. That's that introduction I told you about and how gentle Paul is um, when, he, when he talks. And so what he does is he gives thanks for those saints at Philippi, uh, and he'll talk about uh, the, the work that, that Jesus or God has begun in them and then how that work is going to come to completion. And then he talks about himself being in prison and, and how him being in prison actually furthers the gospel of Christ. Him going through suffering actually furthers the gospel of Christ. So when we get this, therefore, that therefore is based on some of, on, based on these things that happened in chapter one. And I'm paraphrasing because I don't want this to be a two hour, um, a two hour video. Um, but like I say, go back and read it for yourself and you'll get the full crux of this. So we have to understand that there's some people that are going to hate on us because we love Christ. Paul was persecuted. Paul was thrown in jail a number of times uh, because of his preaching of the gospel. And so um, when we get to Philippians 2, we, are, we, are, we, we have a number of words that stick out. So therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, there's a word that sticks out. Comfort of love is the next phrase. I'm in chapter two and I'm in verse one. And then it says fellowship of the spirit. The next term affection and mercy. And then it says, Paul says in, in verse two, fulfill my joy by being like minded. I want you to point out here. If we are going to look out for each other. There, there, there's a reason that. God wants us to look out for one another. And I want to throw something in here. I want to throw something in here. Christians, we have to be careful because sometimes we'll have the idea or the mindset that I only have to look out for another Christian. I don't have to look out for my fellow neighbor or my fellow man or woman. It's just about Christians. I don't apply my Christian life just to other Christians. I apply my Christian life to everybody I come in contact with. Yeah, I want to throw that out there at you. And we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a bit. Um, Christ, uh, Paul says, verse 2, Fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Sorry, it, the and of one mind isn't there. It just says of one mind. And then it says, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. When we look out for one another, that lets other people know that we are of the same mind. When Christians look out for other Christians, when Christians look out for other people, the idea of the same mind that Paul says in here is not that we are the same, all the same people. What I, what I mean by that is each of us is an individual which means we bring our individual taste, we bring our individual way of loving, we bring our individual way of doing things to the church house, to the gospel, to the, the, um, the nation of Christ, however you want to describe this family that we're in. Each of us is, is individual, and there's nothing wrong with that. But as an individual, I am seeking after Christ. I am seeking after the things of Christ. I'm seeking after the things of the Bible. So this is having the same mind, is that we need to look at the Bible together and love on each other the way that we should. And then love on, uh, love on our neighbors the way that we should. And that comes from what the Bible teaches us. The Bible says, love thy neighbor. The Bible also says, love thy enemy. The Bible says, look out for thy brother and sister. And then the Bible says, do good to those who persecute you. This is that part of the same mind. So I was explaining this in, in one of my classes uh, the other night. And what I said is the way that I love on a person may look different than the way that you love on them. In other words, some people, I need to reach out and shake their hand. And that's going to be good enough. 
other people, I need to reach out and embrace them in a hug with your mask on now, right? <laughs> or embrace them in a hug. And that's how I'm going to show them love. With some people, you need to talk hard to them. You know, you have to get in their face and say, no, you can't do it like that. Other people, you have to be gentle because if you talk hard to them, you're going to scare them off. So you have to learn how to love. And then each of us is individual. But what the Bible here, when it says like minded, means that we are searching the mind of Christ. And the only way that I know the mind of Christ, I got to study the Bible. But I also have to have a relationship with Christ and with God. And with the word, excuse me, how do we do that? We study, we go to Bible study, we go to worship service, we read the Bible, we have devotions, we talk to one another. Paul here wants us to look out for one another. And also, not only is it the idea of looking out for one another or watching one another's back, you know, that's an interesting term because some people say, hey, I got your back. And you go, I don't trust you. I, I, I can trust you for two feet. Talking about you got my back. You'll learn in life who the people are that really love you and really care about you and the people that really have your back. Because not everybody has your back. Uh, if any of my friends, uh, those of you that work down there at Long Beach post Acute Care, if you're hearing this message, you know that everybody doesn't have your best interest in mind. And that's where we get a thing called discretion. Uh, if, I just, if I just met somebody and they touched me on the shoulder, hey, man, glad to know you. Cool. I appreciate the touch and the pat on the back of the shoulder. But I don't know you like that. I can't trust you with certain things. We have to build relationship. And in the time that I build relationship, I begin to, to dis have discretion about the people I'm dealing with. And so you learn who's really got your back. But we, as examples of Christ, if we tell somebody, I'm looking out for you, then you ought to do it. But the, the thing that, that I'm trying to get here is that how can we get to a point where we naturally care for others without, without having any other connection? I just see you and I want to care for you. And you may say, Brother Jackson, look, forget all that. I don't know this person. I don't care about them. I'm like, listen, there's a lot of ways that we can care for people. When a person drops a piece of paper, you're walking in front of them and they drop a piece of paper. You don't know what it is. It could be a bill. It could be a receipt. It could be a, a check, right? If you pick it up and say, hey, excuse me, excuse me, you drop something. That's looking out for your brother or your sister or your neighbor. That's a way to show love. It could have been a receipt that they didn't even really want, but you saw it and it fell out of their pocket and you return it. That's a way to show love and to look out for somebody. So I want to go back for just a moment. Now, what I was saying is that uh, for my friends down there, uh, employees that are working in Long Beach Post Acute Care, my hope is that you guys are like minded in the idea that you come to work and you want to look out for one another. But there's always somebody that doesn't have the right thing in mind there's always somebody you don't get along with and so what we have to challenge ourselves with as believers is even though I may not like somebody I can still love them and I can still look out for them and, and if there's a way that I can if, if they have a problem and I can add to fixing their problem I'll do it I don't want to add to the confusion of their problem but if I can add to the fixing of their problem whatever it is if it means that I have to stand afar off and make a phone call and say, hey, this person, I, um, they're not close to me, but I know they need this. Can you get it for them? There, there's all kinds of ways for us to serve and love on one another. Okay, so uh, I want to finish up here just because time. I don't want to be on this too long, but I, there's really a lot of great teaching in here. Verse 4, uh, Philippians chapter 2. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interest of others. When we look out for the interest of others, we take time. There's so much going on in this text, um, and, and it's really fascinating to me. So when we take time to look out for another person, 
when we take time to look out for our brothers and sisters, we can actually build relationship through that because we're taking an interest in them. Brother Jackson, well, why is that important? Uh, now, I give you the old school church answer because the Bible says to do it. I don't like giving that answer because that really doesn't give a lot of confidence in the action. The reason that we should look out, there's a, there's a multi, there's multiplicity of reasons why we should look out for each other. Here's one, though. Don't you want somebody to look out for you? And then when you look out for somebody else, you can build relationship. You can show care. You can show concern. And the other thing about looking out for the interest of others is that by looking out for the interest of others, we can further the gospel. How do we do that? We can encourage one another. We can make that phone call. We can make that, that send that text message, send that email to lift up a brother or a sister. God told us to love one another. Uh, if we look at the uh, first, second, third John, I believe it is, it talks about love. Uh, there's lots of verses in the Bible that talk about love. That just kind of came to mind at the moment. But the Bible calls us as believers to love one another. I can't love you if I never have any concern for you. That doesn't make any sense to me. I can't love somebody if I never have any concern for them. I love people because I want the best for them, whatever that looks like, because the best for them and the best for me look different. And that's OK. That's fine. But I'm looking out for their best interest. And that is a way that I show love. We're commanded to love. Why is it? Why is love so important, Brother Jackson? I always hear Christians talking about love. Well, there's an opposite of love. The direct opposite of love is hate. Right? I mean, what's the in between? I don't love here. Now, love comes in different forms. And I don't have, I'm not going to get into uh, agape and phileo and, and these different things, but the way that I love my wife is different than the way that I love a female friend of mine. It has to be. That's a different kind of love. The way that I love my children, right? It, it looks a little different than the way that I love somebody else's children. Because these ones, my children, are mine. And ultimately, I'm responsible for my children. And, and, and as much as I may love somebody else's child, and I love kids. Kids are awesome. Love kids, love young people, love the energy they have. Um, but my children, I have to put them before other people's children. I have to love them differently. So love is important because love is an action. It's not just that, that if there's a young person on here and you've met that special lady or that special dude or whatever, he's, oh, they just make me feel so good. Yeah, they should make you feel good. But you understand love is an action. It's not just love is a verb. I, I, you know, it's not a it's not a it's not a noun. It's not a descriptive word necessarily. It's an action word. Now, it can be descriptive, but the description of the of the word love really is an action. It's in what you do and how you do it. So um, why is it important to love one another? God wants us to love one another because with love, we will do a lot more when we actually love people rather than hate on them, despise them. Love will cause us to do good things. Love your enemy. That's hard to do, isn't it? But if we can love our enemies, that says something about us. That's different from them. Love is a powerful tool. And if there were more love in our world, things would surely look different. So I can't force you to do anything. And I want you to understand something. Those of you listening, don't take don't take me at my word. You go back and you read the Bible and you study it for yourself. And I can't save you. No man can save another man or a woman. God does the saving. Okay, we are just vessels. We are just, I'm just a mouthpiece for God. That's it. So, we show Christ when we love one another. When we look out for one another, 
we show an example of Christ. And also, uh, there was a mention in here. Oh, I wish I had more time. Um, look at verse 3 of our text. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition. Selfish people don't care about other people. Selfish people care about themselves. Now, there are times when you need to be selfish. And what I mean by that is there are times when you need to step away from people and you need to step away from work and you need to step away from the computer and you need to step away from your phone and just have me time. Because that is when you are rebuilding yourself and your brain and your mind and your peace so that you can go back out and do the work that you need to do. So I'm not against that. But if all you think about is yourself, if all you do is to try and please yourself, how is there any room in there for God? And I'm not going to say forget about God, but, but yeah, forget God. How is there any room for even anybody else to come in if all you're doing is concerned about yourself? God wants us to love one another. He wants us to give of ourselves to one another. And the thing about that is if we can give of ourselves to one another, we can give to God. We can be open to receive God's word. We can be open to receive God's power and the power of the Holy Spirit. But if I'm selfish, me, 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 and stuck up, oh, I ain't going to help that person. I don't want to do nothing for you. Ew. Ooh, I can't stand people like that. All of us. Everybody in this world needs somebody. Everybody in this world has been helped by somebody. But some people get to a certain point and they forget about people who have helped them. That's very dangerous. And I'm going to tell you why. And, and then I got to quit. You don't know what's going to happen down the road. You don't know who you're going to come in contact with today that you may need in the future. You don't know who you're going to come in contact with today that's going to need you in the future. And I've learned, do your best to be kind to people. Because at some point down the road, you may need them or they may need you. For instance, uh, I was teaching a class. Uh, it was a, a class with the um, the Longy School of Music, and uh, I was I was being compensated pretty well for this class, and it came with a bunch of challenges, which I'm not going to talk about right now. But what I will say is that there was a student, and he came up to me and he goes, "Hey, didn't you teach at East Whittier Middle School back in the days?" And I'm looking at him and going, "Whoa." When I was in college, I was teaching at that school, teaching music, and he was a student. Now, not not particularly uh, playing the same instrument. He wasn't a tuba player or a baritone player. He was a sax he's a saxophone player, but he was a student, and he remembered me. And, and I'm saying this to say that you don't know where your paths are going to cross. Now, him as my student, if he did something I really didn't like, right, I could fail him. I could put an F, I could put a D. And then if you're in a master's program, an F and a D, you not that's terrible. A master's program, you get an A or a B in a class. Okay, a C means you're going to probably have to repeat that class. But I said to myself, wow, you just never know how things are going to come back full circle at you. So let's look out for one another. Let's love on one another. And we can show Christ, we can show the gospel by caring for one another, by looking out for one another. And then don't you want God to look out for you? Love ought to be reciprocal. And with some people, they're not going to love you the way they should, or they're not going to love you at all. But just because a few people treat you that way doesn't mean that the bulk of people will treat you that way. And regardless of how people treat you, you be you. If you are a lover of people, you keep on loving on people. Even if somebody comes along the way and in the path and they are as rotten as um, 
three-day-old eggs that have been sitting outside stewing in the sun. They could be as rotten as a skunk. Let them be rotten. And you be beautiful. You be righteous. You be awesome. And by righteous, I don't mean you better than nobody. By righteous, I mean that you're trying to do the right thing. You're following after the right example, which is Christ. So I'm going to end with that. Uh, and I hope that what you get from this is that we ought to look out for one another. We ought to love on one another. And... Um, we can further the gospel by our attitude, by how we live, by how we do things. I hope that that, that word blesses you. If you're not a member of the Church of Christ, um, you need to hear the word of God. You need to believe it. Hearing the gospel, uh, Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You have to hear it. You have to believe it. Uh, Hebrews 11 uh, and 6, but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Uh, a, 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 a relationship with God is a personal thing. And it, it bugs me sometimes that people think that um, you can, uh, I can give you my faith or you can just ride on somebody else's faith. No, you have to have a relationship with God and I can't force that on you. I want you to seek God out for yourself. Read the Bible for yourself. Pray for yourself. Talk to other Christians for yourself. Try it out for yourself. Because that's the only way, really, that you're going to have a relationship with God. For some people, we have to have a tragedy happen in our life to seek out God. Unfortunately, sometimes it's tragedies in people's lives that turn them away from God. And that's something else we can deal with at another time. So you got to hear the gospel. you got to believe it. And then uh, Luke 13, 3 and 5 tells you, I tell you, nay, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Repentance, that's between you and God. This is personal. Uh, and repentance just means that you look at God's way of doing things and recognize that you have your own way and you want to do it God's way and you're asking for forgiveness. And God is going to give you forgiveness. God gives out forgiveness. Man, I mean, he just it, forgiveness, just giving it out. But you got to go to him for forgiveness. Um, and so you got to be baptized. Okay. So you got to hear, believe repentance. That's up to you. Oh, you got to make a confession. That's Matthew 10, uh, 32, 33. Uh, and it says, if you confess me before men, this is Jesus. I'll confess you before my father who is in heaven. If you deny me before men, I'm going to deny you. It's real simple. Either you're in or you're out. That's and and, and once again, that's a personal choice. Are you going to follow Christ or not? A disciple of Christ, that word disciple means follower. So that's up to you. And I want to encourage you. The reason that I, I, I treat this part of the sermon this way is this. I want you to seek out a relationship with God for yourself. And I want you to love him for yourself. And I want you to see him in your life for yourself. Because that was the only way that I really found out that I wanted to follow after Christ. I, I, could, I had to stop listening to what everybody else was saying. Not that everything was, was bad. But until I saw, sought out Christ for myself, until I, until I loved on people, like the way I love on them now, which is I want to have an interest in their life, lives and I want to be able to help them and lift them up. I didn't see Christ. I didn't see God the way that I see him now. So that's why I want to encourage you to have a personal relationship and out of that personal relationship, things will grow. You hear, believe, repent, confess, be baptized. Mark 16, 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. You got to believe it for yourself and then you be baptized. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. I don't know what people have against baptism. It's just water. You get in the water, you go underneath the water, you come out of the water, and that's what, that's what God has called us to do. So I leave you with that, and uh, we'll get to our communion service and end here in just a little bit. But um, I hope the word encourages you and uh, encourages me. And um, if you have not been baptized and you seek baptism, let me know and, and we'll see what we can work out because um, I know that we have to work within the, the confines of Long Beach Post Acute Care and, and, uh, and they have rules and things like that, which I completely understand. But if you seek baptism, there's a way and, and I'd love to see you baptized. Let's have a prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for this day and for all of your blessings. Please be with us and guide us. Keep us safe and keep us well. Thank you for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
All right, let us have our communion service. Um, you should have. Um, and for those of you that desire to take communion, uh, the small cup. And what I ask you to do is before you take this, shake it up a little bit because the, the juice sort of concentrates in the bottom of the cup. So just shake it up. And here we go. Uh, for uh, the communion, I like to read Matthew chapter 26, beginning at verse 26, where it says, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Let us now partake of the bread after a prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this bread that represents your son's body. As we take it, help us to remember the price that was paid for us and the blood that continues to flow for us, the body that was broken for us. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so take that first seal, pull back, let us take the bread together. And I'll continue reading from Matthew. Chapter 26 now, verse 27. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Let us partake of the cup after prayer. Lord, once again, uh, we thank you for the bread and the cup. And dear, and dear Lord, right now as we prepare to take the cup, help us to remember the power that's in the blood of Jesus and how awesome uh, that power is and also how, dear Lord, we are just constantly renewed and refreshed and forgiven and loved uh, through that blood and how you see us through the blood. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Pull back the second seal and we'll take the cup together. And then you can just throw that away or recycle it. I want to thank you for your time this morning and uh, and, for, and for just your consideration. And uh, I don't want to forget, uh, we normally would take up an offering if we were in worship service together. Um, if you have an offering that you would like to me for me to give to the church, and the church where I am at is Crenshaw Church of Christ in Los Angeles. Any money that you give me, I'm going to put it in an envelope, and I'll put in there, um, we used to call this convalescent home ministry, uh, what we may call, I may call it convalescing, and that's just for those who are who are in assisted facilities uh, like Long Beach Post Acute Care, um, and that money goes into the into the treasury, and um, uh, there at Crenshaw Church of Christ. So if you have an offering, you can get it to me, give it to Sheila, put it in an envelope, however it may be, and I'll be happy to deposit that offering for you. All right, my friends, it's been wonderful to uh, spend time with you today. And it's my prayer that you'll be blessed and that we'll see each other in person soon. And uh, God be with you. God bless you. Take care. Uh, if there's anything that you need from me, you can reach out. Please talk to Sheila. And Sheila has my phone number and she can contact me. And um, if there's anything I can lift up in prayer or anything that you need, please just uh, let me know. God bless you. God be with you. And uh, I will see you next time. Take care.